Welcome to the Soulish Podcast. My name is Whitney Apke and I am your host. On the Soulish Podcast, we talk about the soul journey as well as the body, soul, spirit connection and really everything in between. It is the soul journey. It is our life. It is the journey that we take in this incarnation. And so we talk about so many different things between astrology and body work and also relationships and feminine and masculinity is going to be a theme in the next couple weeks, uh, next couple episodes. And so I thought I'd kick it off kind of with a solo episode talking about femininity, since we're going to be talking a lot about masculinity in the next couple weeks. And I, um, I really wanted to kind of share with you guys part of my journey because I think it's helpful. And I honestly really feel like this is something that we've been experiencing on a collective level. So I'm excited to talk about it. But I first just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who listens. Thank you if you're new to the podcast and you're landing on this episode. Thank you for listening. I really just love this community, the Soulish community that we're building together. Uh, it, I think it's really important to have people along with you on the soul journey. It's everything. And this podcast has brought to me so many different people that have been instrumental in just me coming into more authenticity or empowerment or having a realization an aha moment and definitely in the next coming episodes with um a couple guests that are just amazing i have a lot of men coming onto the podcast which is really awesome um and these guys man were so inspiring and i love surrounding myself and kind of accumulating inspiring people because when you surround yourself by inspiration, encouragement, you know, empowerment, authenticity, you end up absorbing that and you automatically kind of adjust, right? And so as you're adjusting into a new frequency, into a new patterning, a new awareness, it just benefits you, right? So all that to say, I'm really proud of the Soulish community. I love y'all's comments. I love hearing from you in the DMs, whether on my personal page or the Soulish podcast Instagram. It is so cool to see y'all's response and what is stirring in you during an episode, what comes up for you, how you're being you know, either triggered or spoken to about something that you're dealing with or you're struggling with or you're realizing oh my gosh this has been a limitation and i didn't see it until now i love that because i really truly believe that the whole reason why we're on a spiritual journey is to come into more freedom and if we are quote unquote spiritual but we're not coming into more freedom or we're not experiencing more freedom in this life then what the hell sorry what the fuck? <laughs> what what is the point, right? What is the point if we're not experiencing more peace, more joy, more love, more freedom, then something isn't happening, right? Something is not integrating, something is not it's not resonating, you know? And so that's why I really honor everyone's journeys because Christianity resonated for me hard, like the first 25 ish years of my life like i resonated hardcore with like jesus saves and holy spirit and you know that we're all sinners being you know being made in righteous you know by jesus and god and um by you know our choices all of that you know i just totally believed in that and i felt that and it resonated and that helped me along my journey, you know, like I am so grateful for my journey um, through Christianity into spirituality. And I don't call myself a Christian because a lot of people that are Christian would probably not appreciate me saying that I'm a Christian if I don't believe that, you know, sin exists for, you know, one of those or heaven or hell is not something that's actually real. I think it's a dimension we've created um, or whatever, you know, an, an awareness, a consciousness, a belief system that we've created. But that's like my personal beliefs, right? And like we all have our own personal beliefs. And I was even talking with a lovely person that I'm getting to know. It. She's um, She lives around me in my town, Littleton. And um, and we, we even had like a really nice chat. We did yoga on the yard at a brewery next door to me. 
and it was very nice. And she, I could tell she's obviously Christian and that's been really helpful to her. That's been very beneficial. So my upbringing brought me to a place where I would have probably debated her on things or wanted her to believe what I believe because then she saved, you know, like if she was of a different religion or belief system, I would have felt compelled to by the end of this lunch, you know, save her right from hell and damnation. And what I was kind of realizing was like, this is so fun because I can totally relate with her and I can totally understand what she's saying. And we have this mutual respect between us, which is really awesome, which is rare. And she's not threatened, I don't believe, by what I'm saying, but I also kept it real neutral and uh, and spoke the lingo. Um, but we can at least have some commonality, you know, because I still love the concept or the understanding of spirit as Holy Spirit or, you know, even God instead of universe. Like I definitely identify more with Holy Spirit and God than maybe even source universe um, or great spirit like Native American style. Um, Holy Spirit just feels reverent to me. It feels like I've, I'm keeping that awe factor when I say Holy Spirit because I'm understanding that this is something that I am and it is holy and I am holy. And so that resonates with me. But, you know, it's just really cool when you can find the commonality, you know, even if you're of a completely different religion or belief system or, you know, whatever, or none at all. It's really cool when we can find commonality amongst each other. And I think that just brings unity. And that's really what it's all about is that belief of separation is something that I'm really working on. I haven't perfected it yet, but even like, oh, you're Christian, I'm a spiritual person. You know, you're religious, I'm not religious. You know, it's like this, you are that, I am this. That mentality, I feel like just creates division. It doesn't create unification. And that's what we're all about, right? No matter what religion or belief system, we're, we're a collective, we are one, and we're becoming one. And I think it's important to realize that. Plus love also is like all up in it. And love does not disregard because there's differences. Love celebrates the differences and perspectives. And that's one thing that I've just really come to love and embrace and not fear, because I used to fear it and fear different belief systems or thoughts, you know, because I was like, oh my God, you know, like that's like, you know, that leads to Satan. Just anything that's outside of Christianity leads to Satan. <laughs> and so it just, yeah, I think that's one thing I have really valued is different perspectives, different way of viewing things because it's not my perspective. And so it's great to be able to kind of come into someone's perspective and their world, their ideas, and see things from the way that they see them because it's totally different. And we all come from different backgrounds too, all different upbringings and things like that. And that's one thing that I'd love to get into in this episode is how our childhood really defines us. And for me, how it defined me as a woman, uh, what it is to be feminine, what it is to be female, what it is to be woman. Um, and growing up, how that was, how that shaped my perspective, even on my body image um, or value or worth, um, all those things. Because I think it's really all encompassing, isn't it? Like we are our childhood. We are uh, the things that we learned or observed as kids. And that shapes you, you know, you can't deny it, that it doesn't shape you, shape your relationships, shape your friendships, your connections, your belief about God, source, universe, and the beyond, the great beyond, and how you relate, even how you show up for work and what you choose to do in work. I mean, everything in life, right, shapes us and our experiences. And so there's so much there, right? I mean, this could be like an hours, hours, hours of an episode if we went into everything, but I really want to kind of focus in on femininity because the majority of my listeners are women, although I love to bring in the men and the non-binary 
Um, but I think it's really cool to talk about femininity because we all have masculine and feminine energy within us. Like we're all made up of that. And so whether you're female or male or non-binary energetically, and we've talked about this before on, on the podcast. So I think anyone who listens regularly, you're going to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you know, we are made up of both. And I even had like Brandon Bozarth. I had him on the podcast last summer and we talked about this. That was really awesome. I've had a few other people where we have talked about that dynamic. And I've, I believe I've even had a couple solo episodes um, where we have talked about that dynamic of the masculine and the feminine together. So um, I'll probably honestly have like Brandon's episode um, at the end of this episode. So you can click on that and watch that because it was really helpful. Really awesome. Brandon's amazing. Um, but I think that for me, like my experience as a child, as a girl, as a little girl, my father got into a car accident when I was three. And, um, and so I remember that very vividly. I remember going to the hospital, feeding him ice chips. Um, and, and life kind of shifted after that, like three or four, maybe actually four, four years old was when he had the accident. And so everything kind of shifted after that because my mom became, became caretaker and she became breadwinner and there was a few good years um, where my dad was pain-free and bless him for those years where he was a pastor he was very active um he was doing well you know and so i had my father in my early childhood and i honestly go back to that feeling of when he was around and how I felt when I've been tapping into um, trying to get back into the safety of being in my feminine, in my feminine energy and coming from that heart space and intuition space rather than head space, which is more masculine um, because neither are bad. I just know by default, I am more feminine energetically. So what I'm wanting to attract into my life is more masculine like i want to experience a masculine man not a feminine man if that makes any sense so and i am attracted to that i am attracted to gladiator i'm attracted to braveheart i'm attracted to anything that's large and in charge and muscly (laughs) and so even on like dating just in dating i'm having a hard time finding men and not boys um, and so we have a couple episodes coming up, um, one with Andre Parody. Um, he's two episodes away from this episode or three, yeah, three episodes away from this episode. And that's going to be amazing. It was groundbreaking for me. I had so many epiphanies and I'm going to be working with him as well, um, just to help. So that's going to be awesome. But I also have Tyrone Morales on, um, he is going to be next week's episode. Amazing so amazing what a heart of gold that man and he is your classic like mountain man like he bathes in the river he throws boulders the man could probably cut a tree with his teeth i mean he's just like (laughs) he is masculine you know and we had such a good conversation we connected over instagram from one of my girlfriends lindsay who's been on this podcast lindsay mack and they live in the same place, Calgary, and she's known him for a long time. So it's really cool to connect with someone that is a quality, like masculine man, right? We're all on a healing journey. No one is like whole, like a whole person in the sense of like, you you don't need to do any integration work. You don't need to heal anything. You don't need to become aware of anything. Like that is our journey, right? We're always healing. We're always growing. If you're not growing, then what are you doing? So, but a healthy masculine man is is not something that I've really come across too much. And I I have experienced it, but not a ton. And so it's gonna be really cool these upcoming episodes. I'm really excited for you guys. But all that to say, I want to attract that into my life, you know, healthy masculine, not a boy, not someone that is really needing to do a lot of like foundational groundwork. Um, and that's what I'm wanting to attract, but I also want to sit back in my feminine, 
uh, energy because this helps me to flow. This actually feels more authentic and I feel empowered in that. And that's something that I want to continue to pursue and continue to cultivate and continue to move, live, have my being from. And so if, if for you, if you know by default, um, it's really hard because we say, oh, well, no, I am more like in my masculine. Well, that's because of work, right? That's because of culture. That's because of society. And and that would be if you identify as female, right? So for you to say, if you if you identify as a female, a woman, and you say that, no, energetically, I'm actually more masculine than I am feminine, I would like for you to look at that. I would honestly like for you to look at that because we live in a patriarchal society. And so what we say is default is actually more conditioning and programming than it is default. For a while, I really identified with like that alpha female, like, you know, boss babe, boss bitch, you know, mentality. And I was like, yeah. And I was like feeling really powerful in it, you know, which is great. But then I realized, oh, I'm not attracting what I want to attract in this energy. I'm actually attracting dependency on me. I'm actually attracting people that are takers. And and I actually feel super dry and like have no grace or patience for anyone or anything else other than what I'm doing right now. And I my cup is full. And I honestly look back on my early like mid 20s. And I was single for like five years after my first boyfriend back when I was 23. I was single for like five, six years. And I honestly think the reason why I was single was because I went into this mentality that like, I don't need a man and, you know, I can do everything on my own. And I also wrapped it in. I love myself. I like myself. I rebuilt myself as well. I really took time to heal, to be restored because it was actually a really traumatic experience in that first relationship with my first love. And so I rebuilt myself and I was like, no man is ever going to hurt me ever the fuck again, you know, fuck men, right? <laughs> I was like in this total, like, total, like, fuck it all. Like, I, and I also was like, no, single for life, baby. Yeah. Like, mm -mm, I don't need, I don't need partnership. Don't want it. Don't need it. Bye. You know, and I was like, totally happy being single, totally happy just being on my own and doing my thing and serving the Lord and serving, you know, whatever, being in ministry and all of that. So, I think what's hard with that is that that, you know, basically stamped fuck off on my forehead. So what man, healthy or not healthy, is going to approach a woman when she has that type of energy? Nobody, right? And so I'm not attracting what I want to attract. I'm not attracting anything masculine because I'm completely having that energy of like, fuck off, right? Um, don't approach. I was always a good wing woman. Like, we went to a bar. I was like that wall, like no man could penetrate it. And I would just protect my girlfriends. I would ask them like, do you want, do you want men to approach you tonight? Or do you just want to have a girl's night? And they'd be like, girl's night. And I'd be like, cool. Well, I'm going to have fuck off written on my forehead for all of us, you know? And I was like, yeah. And all the girls were like, this is amazing because we can just like be our, be ourselves and not get hit on. And this is great. And I was like, it's because I'm here. <laughs> Isn't that sad? So I mean, I think like all of our journey is great. And so I don't regret anything because it's part of our journey and part of our process. And to be honest, that was a part of my healing journey too, you know, was being in that place. But what I didn't do was I never came back over to what was natural, what was instinctual, what was um, my place of intuition and trust. And so I, did, I never softened, right? I stayed hard. And because I stayed hard, I was like, you know, I feel like I calcified almost in that place and then realized it later. And now I'm like chipping away at that. And so I've been reading one of my favorite books is Women Who Run With Wolves. And it really talks about femininity. And I find myself like putting my head back and just like, oh, you know, it's everything I want. You know, it's like everything I had, I feel in my gut you know, that like, this is me. This is what I long for. This is what my heart aches to experience. And it's, it's literally just that instinctual, like that, that wild nature that it's not that it's wild because it's out of bounds or 
or um, crazy, right? Or um, chaotic in a bad sense, in a negative sense. Wild just means you're in your natural state. You're in a place of instinct, intuition, trust. Um, you're you're being guided from your gut, from your heart space, not your head space. And it just, yeah, it's like, it's really the best way I can describe it is the little girl, like who little Whitney was at six, seven, even five. I was a totally different person at the core of who I was. I flowed, right? I was not rigid. I didn't have a plan, you know, and as a kid, like, obviously you don't typically have a plan, but it was the way that I thought about life and thought and related with people. I was so carefree. I was so trusting. And there is like parts of that that you learn over time, like trust is not given freely, like all of it, like trust is also earned incrementally, um, which is something that we talk about in future episodes, which is great. But I, I just took people for face value. I also was so open and receptive. And I just, I miss that little girl that was free to dance and free to play. And I'm not going to cry. And <laughs> not crying is not bad, but I'm just going to try not to cry because then I can't talk. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, and I know like anyone who's listening, you go back to who you were by default. Like you didn't care who was watching. You didn't care who saw you being carefree, being in your space and just doing what you felt, you know, like in the moment. And that is, that is so much like who we are at the core is we typically don't care. We start caring when we realize that, oh, we may not fit in. You know, once the social game ha starts happening, like in, elementary school for me it was more like junior high not so much elementary but junior high yeah you start learning real quick like to be cool you know what is to be cool what is cool and how can you be cool and oh being cool is like wearing overalls and a sweatshirt in california at the time um or these like really cool like vans vans shoes were really hot um in middle school for me and then it was also like how you bound your books you know you didn't bind your books in paper you know wrap your books in paper you had to find these cool stretchy things um that had like cool stuff on them and that was that was more cool and so there's just all these things right like from middle school and elementary school probably these days and on that you realize like oh you start you start thinking about how are people looking at me and relating and we become so aware of that instead of just being in our own world you know in this sense and that's one thing that i really appreciate about tyrone in the next episode um next week is he does not give a flying fuck what people think about him he is just him and he's so carefree and that was one thing that i was like dude he's so in his instinct in his masculine he's so in his in his own nature and who he is as a person and i just value that because that's something that i want more of in my life hello soulish tribe so i know that i'm not alone and always feeling thirsty even though i hydrate throughout the day i'm always feeling that i need more water especially after those cycling classes my friends james and mark over at zaka have the perfect solution Zaka's Hydration and Liver Aid is the number one recovery and hydration solution for working out, jet lag, or drinking, maybe just a little too much. Zaka uses herbs such as Japanese raisin as well as other natural and fermented ingredients that are safe and without artificial flavors. Zaka is unique because it doesn't just replenish what your body needs, but also supports your body's natural ability to recover. It's two very, very yummy and very chewable tablets that you can put under your tongue or chew up and swallow. Go to Zaka.com, that's Z-A-C-A.com, and use promo code SOULISH15 to get 15% off of your order. How do we tap into our default nature, whether it's feminine or masculine? How do we tap into that? How do we even know what is default? I think for me, I know what's default because I look at little video clips of myself and I can see the little girl. I can see the flow. I can see the feminine energy. It's raw 
and untamed and not yet programmed or conditioned to be anything else other than what I was. And those were the years where that was celebrated. Whereas now it's like, oh, calm yourself. You know, oh, don't dance like that. Like, you need to look sexy on the dance floor. Hello. You know, and so there's like, you know, there's all these things. Um, you know, don't be angry. Don't express emotion when you feel it. Um, you need to calm that down. You know, I I would always see like how uncomfortable it would make people when I would have this moment of just like, ah, you know. And that mostly happened in ministry because I was so frustrated with people and politics and the the fact that my voice was never, I felt like it was never heard or received or even considered or it made a difference at all. And so also one of the things that I, I've been realizing and I've been realizing the last like week and a half recently is also my relationships with women and how open I am with women. Um, men is a whole nother subject. We can go on that another day. But my relationships with women and how I relate to the feminine. And I think I shared this um, earlier this year because I went on a plant medicine journey, ayahuasca. Um, and that was like one of the first things that Mama Gaia addressed because there was a couple next to me and they were making specifically the girl was making sexual what i consider sexual squeaks and noises and all of that and and i was like so unnerved by it and not not comfy at all i was like oh my god why did i sit here and then he's like doing these deep like <laughs> like type breathing and i was just like i feel like i am in a private session <laughs> like i just yeah I don't want to be here right now. It was just so uncomfortable. And I was getting more annoyed, more annoyed, more annoyed. And I was coming up on the medicine. It was right after taking the first dose. And I was just annoyed. And she was like moving and she was like doing all these things and uh, moving in all these types of ways. And he's like right there behind her, like, you know, um, kind of facilitating or whatever he's doing with her. And they're together obviously. So it's kind of like a joint thing for them. And all of a sudden I hear the little faint whisper of what I would consider Holy Spirit, God, Source, Universe, Mother Earth, Mother Gaia, Mama Gaia, whatever you identify with. If this is weird, I'm sorry. But I heard Mama Gaia, it was a softer voice. It was, it was really interesting hearing Mama Gaia versus like, I've always heard Holy Spirit, God, Source, Universe um hearing mama gaia speak was so much more feminine it was way softer yet to the point still um but very like coaxy does that make any sense like it was kind of like bringing things to me to consider yeah well okay and what about this and what about that and so what do you how does that sit she was always asking me to tune in it was always like pressing me to kind of tune in to the feeling that i was feeling so what came up with that, and I think I shared this before, but just to make this clear, um, she's like, you know why that gets you, right? And I was like, not a clue. It just really is irking me hardcore right now. I'm really annoyed. And she's like, yeah, it's because you're not comfortable and you're feminine. And I was like, what? What do you mean? She's like, you automatically assume that's sexual. She's not being sexual. I was like, that's not being sexual. She's like, no, she's just expressing what she's feeling. She's just expressing herself. That's just how she expresses herself. I was just like, hmm. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm, I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with the fact that I'm totally judging her right now and I'm judging him and I'm really, I'm irked. Like, I'm not okay with this feeling. Like, this feeling is not what I want to be feeling right now or ever. And she's like, okay. So you don't want that feeling anymore? You don't want that anymore? It's like, no, I want to be comfortable in my feminine. I want, I want to, I want to be comfortable in my feminine. I don't want to be uncomfortable in my feminine. And I don't want to judge her for what she sounds like 
because that's that's religious that's coming from that religious background of like sinner 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 i'm basically saying she's sinning right now is how i'm acting i'm responding even though i i know that's not a sin you know or for me it's not but i'm i'm judging her like she's doing something wrong and she's not doing anything wrong i'm not okay with that i want that out i was just like i want that out i want that out of me take that take it have at it <laughs> and Shortly thereafter, literally seconds, I purged for the first time, which we won't go into that. But I immediately, I felt that release once I was like, no, I want, I, I don't want that. I don't want that anymore. I don't want to feel that way about her anymore or anyone or any woman or my freaking self. Like, I don't want this. I want to be comfortable in my feminine. That's what I am by default. I am feminine. This is a part of me, you know? And I don't want that. And I don't want to judge someone else like God, you know, take the scales off my eyes. You know, I don't want it. And as soon as I really felt that and it was like hardcore, like I was really way more intense than I am right now um, on the inside because I wasn't yelling out loud. But I just like on the inside, I was yelling. I was upset that like I was uncomfortable in my feminine. As soon as she said it, I knew it was true. It resonated immediately. I was like, yeah, yep. That's what that is, because I've been taught my whole fucking life that being female, being feminine, being in that, whatever that was in the feels and expressing yourself like that, that that's wrong. Like having boobs and ass showing it at any level is wrong, right? And I have shared this so many times, so I do not need to go into it again. But like I've had so many different experiences of feeling not okay that my thighs are like showing in a dress or you know, whatever, anything above the knee is like, ooh, sexual. Um, and that it's my fault that I have boobs and an ass, that I have a voluptuous body because that is causing other men to stumble. And it's like, so by default, everything about me is wrong. How I express myself, the way I look, the way I smell, um, the makeup that I wear, right? Like um, if it's a, if it's a red lipstick, it's like, Ooh, seductress, right? Like automatically I'm a seductress because I just like red. And I think red makes everything about my beauty pop and I love it. And I have fucking awesome lips. And so I want to fucking rock some red lipstick. It's freaking summer. Like that's what I want to do, but that's not okay to do at a church barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> learned that the hard way that was not okay you know got looks you know immediately went to the bathroom took it off put some gloss clear gloss on hope that it tamed the red so i wouldn't get so many looks anymore yeah not cool seductress Ooh, right <laughs> so it's just so wild and and i just realized oh my god i'm doing that i'm that woman that judged me at the freaking church barbecue wearing red lipstick like I'm her right now, just in a different costume and in a different way, a different setting, but I'm doing exactly the same thing. So I really felt like I purged that. And, and I've honestly been integrating so much since that plant medicine journey. It was like, I, I was thinking I would have gone back by now, but no, like I'm integrating so much. There's still so much that is, you know, basically just kind of like soaking in to all parts of me and that I'm just integrating and realizing, but it comes back to what our original nature is, what it is that we want to express, how we want to be, move, live, have our being and what that looks like. And so at work, yeah, I'm going to be more in my masculine. I'm in the get her done. I'm a business manager. I manage multiple businesses as well as my own. Like I'm going to be in boss mode, you know, but I, once work is done, I want to sit back and be into more of a receiver state, into a flow state, not structure, not be a container. I want to be that which is contained. And, and I want to allow space for someone to come in and contain it, you know? But when you give, 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 and then you're not really open to receiving, like receiving is an uncomfy thing for you. That's kind of when you know, like, mm, I maybe have like an issue with my feminine and I have an issue receiving and, and not owing anything in return. And that is, that is feminine energy. If I cut off my heart 
from women or men, then I will never experience healthy, whole, happy, content, fulfilling relationships, friendships with those men and women. And so I just want to encourage you in that. I know like it's really hard being a man. It's really hard being a woman. It's really hard finding this balance in our feminine and masculine energies and so much of our upbringing in our childhood, you know, if you have like a codependent parent or if you had like a situation like me where a parent ends up kind of inadvertently abandoning you, you know, or being absent, you know, in that sense. And you, like for me, I grew up watching my mom take on everything. And so for me, that's how I learned to be. I learned to be that mama bear. I learned to be of service to everyone and everything and not need anything in return and not accept anything in return. And that's how I learned was by observing that. And then boss babe culture came in, right? Feminist movement also has been, you know, permeating. And I didn't realize that me being in this space actually is a invisible wall that is not penetratable and no one can attach to me because I'm unattachable, but I can, I can give and I can reach out and I can love on and all of that be warm and loving and all of that I can give, but to receive is a vulnerability because when you receive from someone, you take it in, you know, and that's, um, that's something that's not easy, not easy to do if you have learned that this is something that is not safe, that you can't quite trust it, you know? And so that, that partnership, you know, as well, like leaning on each other, um, you know, being self-sufficient, you know, apart from each other, but partnership is coming together and you do lean on each other. You do rely on each other, right? For life, you know? anything. So whether it's you actually have kids together or you just live life together, whatever it is. And that could be in friendship, that could be in work, that could be in relationships um, in any which way. And so for us to enjoy our lives, for us to step into that authenticity and to step into that default, you know, go back to your default setting. What is that? And to find the ways that you have closed off to that or that has not been safe or that has not been something that you have experienced fulfillment or joy or love or peace or more freedom from, right? Because everything, if you're in the right space, that should, that will be, a, that will be what you receive. That will be what you experience is more freedom, more peace, more love, more joy, right? So if you're not experiencing that and you're suffering, that's a good indicator that maybe, just maybe, you're not coming from an authentic space. Maybe there's more healing that needs to take place. And if more healing needs to take place, then what is it that actually needs to be healed? What are the experiences that taught you that it wasn't safe to be who you are? That it's uh, it's dangerous or it's uncool or it's not going to be received. And then go to those moments in your life and heal. You know, bring truth bring love and compassion to it even, you know, that hurt, that was painful. Yes, that was an experience. But just because I experienced that once or multiple times doesn't mean it's true for everyone. And what was the common denominator? You know, have I been hanging out with the wrong crowd? Have I been hanging out with people? Like for me, the realization, I don't know if I've ever been on one date with a man, like a healthy masculine man. I think I've really only ever been on a date with boys or guys. And that made me realize and made me sad because I realized, oh, something's wrong then. In the sense of, it's not that I'm like wrong. There's something wrong with me in that sense of like, I'm not enough or whatever, right? Not female enough, not feminine enough. It just means like, oh, I must not be attracting what I want because I'm attracting this. So I need to shift my energy because I want to be attachable. I want people to attach, you know, the right kind of people, right? Healthy whole people, right? Healthy people. I want, I want people to be able to attach to me, to give, to have this reciprocity, right? And there's no reciprocity. So I'm learning that and I'm coming into that. And I feel like the more conversations I've been having with my girlfriends, with my guy friends, 
it's been really cool to have this conversation and to kind of realize like, oh, wow, I'm not alone in this. And so I thought this would be a really great conversation to kind of have. And I'm kind of molding things here about childhood and your default energy setting and how that interacts with that. But um, I think that that is, you know, we are whole people. We come with whole experiences. We, we can't just like shut off childhood and say that has no relationship to who I am now. That doesn't define how I have relationships and conversations and relate to people now because that's not true because it totally is, you know. Um, but I hope that this conversation was helpful and gives you food for thought on what is it that you are experiencing in your life? Is it what you want to be experiencing? Are you experiencing what you want to experience? Are you attracting into your life what you want to be attracting? If the answer is no or not really, then it's good to look within and say, so why am I attracting this? This experience is not what I want. So what do I need to shift in here? What feels right? What resonates? What feels, what feels you know, in alignment with who I am? And how am I how am I able to go back into that space and and find that find home, you know, find home base again and come back to that space and really I for me too, it's like I'm guarding her. That little girl that is in the flow, that does not care who's listening, who's watching, um, who is totally in the flow state, is open, receptive, loving, kind, um, fulfilled, happy, you know, that is who I am at default. And that is what I want to be going forward because that is where I'm going to then be attracting the things that I want to experience in this life. Abundance, relationships, friendships, right? Purpose. Um, that's what I want to be experiencing. So really kind of a interesting episode, solo episode with me, but I hope that this is really helpful and I hope that this encourages you and um, encourages you to go back to whatever home base is or default is and and really come from more of an authentic place and end up attracting and bringing in and experiencing things that you want to experience, people that you want to end up being in friendship or relationship with and connections and all of that. That's what I want for you. That's what I hope for everyone. So I'm on the journey. Let's be on the journey together. I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening. And I will see you back here next week with Tyrone.